Lord is here to tell you that Jesus Christ commands you all to repent. Turn from your sins, turn to Jesus Christ before it's too late. The Bible, the Bible talks very clearly on this sort of lifestyle that it's against God's nature. The Bible also said not to judge. I just got here one minute ago. I am loving. Why are you here? Because I love my neighbor. Because I love my neighbor. Why don't you go over there? I don't want you to go to hell. You don't want me to go to hell? Yeah, Jesus is coming. So I don't believe in hell. Why don't you go over there? No, I have a right. Why don't you leave? Because I got to show the love of Jesus. It's a free country. No, I am the event. It's a free country. It's a public street. I am actually. It's been closed. I've been here for one minute. No, Please I've been here for one minute. Please leave. I'm not going to listen leave. to you. I'm Sir, I'm here from Jesus. Okay, I'm mandated by God to come out here and preach the gospel. You don't have an amplification permit. You need to leave. It's a free speech the, area, no, man. This is America. Why do you hate God? Yeah, it's nothing to do with that. Yeah, you, you said you're Jewish. You got to be a Christian, though. Jesus said that unless you believe that He's the Son of God, you're going to die in your sins. I don't care. So if you do not I don't leave, care. Call this is a free country. This is America. No, no, no. You do, you do not Land have of the free, home of the brave. System permit. They you have do an application. Permit I'm permitted by God. We I don't need. I don't need your you permit. This is a free country. Do you want me to call the police? I'm here for Jesus Christ. That tells people that you need to turn from your wicked ways and turn to God before it's too late. Jesus said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me." So this tells me that there's only one way to get to God, and that's through Jesus Christ. Okay, folks? So, I don't care if you think I'm raining on your parade. I don't want you to go to hell. I don't want you to burn. I'm here to tell you what's right and what's wrong. Okay? You can't be on this list, folks. Jesus Christ died for us that we might not be on the list. That we might turn to God with all of our heart and ask God to forgive us of our sins. Okay? That's a lie. I don't, I don't, I don't, the last, the last social media website that I was on was like AOL, like in the 90s. But Jesus Christ is coming back, okay? And he's going to take the rainbow back, and all the born-again Christians are going to escape the wrath of God. Okay? Bible says, little children, keep yourselves from idols. This is idolatry here today. You worship this sort of concept. You worship this sort of philosophy of same-sex relations. But that's all it is, is a concept. It's a philosophy. But it's not the way of righteousness. It's not the ways of God. Okay? The Bible, the Bible says, the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the male and female, okay, so that we would multiply the earth, okay, Jesus Christ loved us enough to die for us, but you despise God's love, and you continue in your rebellion, you continue in your wicked ways, okay, you say, well, preacher, I'm not a homosexual, I just support the event, or even though you support the event, your hands are guilty with the homosexual, if you're a true Christian, you got to love what God loves, you got to hate what God hates. That's what marks you as a true Christian. Okay, you don't support the things that God hates. The Bible says, male shall not lie with another male, for it is an abomination unto God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, that no effeminate, no butch female, has any inheritance in God's kingdom. Okay? The Bible says, and such were some of you, but now you're washed. Now you're sanctified by Jesus Christ in His Spirit. So you can be set free from this lifestyle. There's hope for you. You weren't born that way. You weren't born that way. The Bible makes it very clear how you were brought here into existence. Okay? You're either a male or a female. Don't touch me. Stand back or you're going to go to jail. Okay, I have a right. This is free speech. You, don't, you can't have amplified music. You can stay. Well, I'm not you can call the police if you want. I got I to gotta comp compete with that amplified over there. I'm not here all day, ma'am. I have a short time to tell you people the truth. It's not bothering anyone, okay? It, it, okay, whoever's bothering, you have them call the pop cops. 
Okay? Yeah. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by Him. Okay? If, if you support, if you, there's been a lot of conversions from homosexuality to the right way, okay? So our fruit testifies, okay? We preach to we, No, let, him, let her talk, man. This is a free country. Let her talk. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. I hear you. I hear you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Why would you come to a pride festival and start popping up a sign saying, kill popper, a liar, a thief? Do you know we have an opioid epidemic? You know we have an opioid epidemic in this country? Okay. That's just one of the sins. That's just one, ma'am. I'm not pointing out sexuality. There's a lot of sins up here. I used to be on this list, ma'am. But Jesus Christ cleansed me from my sin. And you all can be cleansed too. That's a true Christian telling people the truth. You can't just condone the lifestyle and call yourself a Christian, ma'am. Okay, you gotta love what God loves, hate what God hates. Well, I know God is my Lord and my Savior. Right, okay. And I am a clean and sober woman. Great. Okay, but I don't condone people for their lifestyle. Okay. Right. But, but okay, let me give you a scripture. The Bible says if you dress Okay, you don't know this scripture. The Bible says they that justify the wicked and they that condemn the righteous are both an abomination to God. So if you if you condone this behavior, ma'am, you're an abomination from God. Before God. What? Your child is your child. That's your flesh and blood. Okay, well you gotta repent and forgive them. Okay? You brought them in this world. Well he's you, a child of God. Okay, you gotta forgive him before it's too late. You don't wanna die with a grudge in your heart, okay? Well you gotta tell huh? No, your son was born a son. Your son was born a male, okay? Right. So there's no distinct there's no controversy there. God created them in the beginning male and female. Yeah, but he, okay, but he needs to repent. He needs to come back to God. He's a prodigal son right now. He's straight away from the path. He needs to come back to God. As long as he claims God as his Savior and his Lord, he's going to heaven just like you and me. Jesus said, you're my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. John 15, 14. Okay, so even though you say you believe in Jesus Christ, you can still go to hell because your lifestyle has not changed. Okay? Your works are not testifying of your Christianity. Do you just find it fun to like make fun of people? Do you have a question? Are you a Christian, ma'am? No. So why are you continue with me? I'm a Christian. I have a job here. Jesus said, go out into all the world and preach the gospel to all creatures. You're not exempt. He's not exempt. They're not exempt. Everyone needs the gospel preached to them. No one here is exempt. Okay? Jesus didn't say pass up the pride parade. Okay? They're all reprobates going to hell. No. Some of you may still be uh, have the opportunity for salvation. If you don't continue to give yourself over to this sin, God will cut you off. You're too young for that. You don't even know what hell is about, ma'am. You don't know about the blackness of you don't know about the blackness of darkness. You don't know where the worm is not uh, dieth not and the fire is not quenched. You don't want to have anything to do with that, ma'am. Okay? Hell is solitary confinement. It's not partying with the devil. Okay, we're, we're here to tell you the truth. Okay, Jesus Christ loved us enough to die for us on the cross. Okay, and he rose from the grave on the third day. Not so we can continue in sin. Not so we can continue on this list and, and, and feel proud of it. And, and have so much pleasure about these sins. But we have to despise this lifestyle, these sins. I used to be on the list. But I repented and asked God for forgiveness. Now I'm no longer on the list. Okay, Jesus Christ was tempted, but he didn't give in to sin. Oh, but many of you, but many of you get tempted and you give right into sin. Okay, you got to come out of darkness, folks. Come into the marvelous light. Jesus Christ is the light. He's going to lead you out of darkness. Okay, you think it's hot out here? This is nothing compared to hellfire. I'm ready for hell. Ah, you don't. You're, you're not ready for it, man. Trust me. I don't wish that upon my worst enemy. I don't wish hell upon you. You don't know what it's about. Okay? Because once you cross over, there's no repentance. There's no purgatory. Okay? There's no crying out to God. Oh, God, I, forgive me now. I believe. Can I go to heaven? No. That's why God has given us this life. 
so that we might live and repent, confess our sins before God so that we might have forgiveness. Don't you want to be clean? Don't you want to be a, a secure? You like chlamydia? You like gonorrhea? You like HIV? You like those things? That brings death. What about waiting till you get married to a man and abstaining from sex? No, but that's no, but God didn't command you to live like that. He said that He said that a man would leave his mother and father and cleave unto his wife, wife, wife. Okay. The Bible says in First Corinthians, nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and every woman have her own husband. Period. Very, very cut and dry, folks. So I don't know why this is such an anomaly to see a Christian on the street corner preaching the gospel. The sad part is, is that you're so you're so immersed in this wicked culture and this society that you don't know what's right and wrong. You don't know what's good and bad. Oh, the Bible says, "Woe unto you when you call that which is evil good and good evil." Jesus Christ is the bread of life that came down from heaven, and whoever eats of Him shall never die. He's the water of life. He said, whoever is thirsty, come and drink of me, Jesus said. And he'll never thirst again. He quenches the thirst. He satisfies the appetite. That's what he did for me. When I was living in fornication, I was never a homosexual, but I was a fornicator. I slept around before marriage and called the friends with benefits. I smoked marijuana. I watched pornography. And I was a sinner. I was on my way to hell. That's why Jesus Christ cleaned me up. And he can do the same thing for you. He can do the same thing for you and all of you. But why do you stay numb with neglect? Why do you stay ignorant? Why don't you examine yourself to see whether Jesus Christ is in you or not? The Bible says, lest you be a reprobate, rejected silver, good for nothing, worthless, defiled before God. I don't want you to come to that conclusion. But you're on the verge, coming out to places like this. You're right there on the edge. When God is going to literally give you over to your sin. And then you're going to die as a homosexual. You're going to die as a weed smoker. You're going to die as a porn watcher. You're going to die as a lesbian. And then what? When you stand before a holy, righteous God, you're going to say, God, give me a little bit more time. You're going to wish this preacher preached a little louder and a little harder. But no, folks. You're given this day of grace today so that you might turn from your wicked ways today. Before it's too late, man. I don't want you to die and go to hell. I want you to be saved. I want you to be free. I want Jesus Christ to live inside of you and change you. That's what he did to me. I'm no different than any of you. I was a sinner as well. I was doing my own thing. I was enjoying the, the pleasures of sin for a season. I had to turn to God. I had to confess my sin. Oh, I had to... I had a kind of comp contemplation of my sin. It's not about free hugs. It's not about free hugs. It's about turning to God before it's too late. Make sure you're not on the list, folks. Make sure you're not on this list. If you are on this list, you need to come to repentance. Cry out to God for mercy. Ask God for deliverance. He can deliver you from your lesbianism. He can deliver you from your sodomy. Just because you serve the country, ma'am, doesn't mean that you're going to serve God. Okay? The Bible says this is a spiritual war that we're in. It's not against flesh and blood, against principalities and powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is the true battlefield, okay? On this earth, living everyday life, resisting temptation, turning away from sin, reading your Bible, asking God for forgiveness when you fall short. Making sure the devil uh, doesn't hunt you down and steal, kill, and destroy your soul. Jesus said the devil is out to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus Christ came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Folks, you're under the chains of the devil. You're under the chains of bondage right now. You don't see it, but I see it. Because I have spiritual eyes of discernment. And you're under the shackles of sin. Yes, you are. You tell me one area in the Bible where it condones that lifestyle. You tell me one area in the Bible where it condones that lifestyle. Okay, I'll tell you where it doesn't. I'll tell you where it doesn't. I'll tell you right now. 
I'll tell you right now, New Testament, people always say, why do you go to the Old Testament, preacher? Uh, New Testament, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. It says, Do you not know that the unrighteous shall not inherit God's kingdom? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves or mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunks, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall not inherit God's kingdom. You're labeling that in there. I don't know anyone. I don't know anyone. None of, none of these the LGBT is listed. I just, I just, I just read it, ma'am. They're not in the Bible. I read it. I said, effeminate or abusers of themselves or mankind. That's homosexuals in the New Testament, in, the, in our contemporary language. Okay, you have to. It's Old English. That's why they made a new version. Okay. Well, the Bible says clearly that in the new version is homosexuality. Look at the NIV. It says homosexuality. This is the King James Bible. What does it say about it? It's Old English. Okay, the NCV and the... The new, te the very contemporary versions will say. When you get updated with your stuff, on away from here to where you can actually think straight, because honestly, it's America. I fought for this. I know. That's I appreciate this, that. Honestly, I feel like you're spitting. I'm not spitting on you. You're yes. spitting. I feel like you're spitting on God. Me? Yeah, because you're coming against the preacher, and I'm doing the work of God. I'm fighting in the true battlefield, my friend. I suffer the wounds of Christ. You may have wounds that are physical from war, and I empathize, but I have the wounds of Jesus Christ upon me, the marks of the Lord. Uh, you don't know. You don't know the cost that there is to being a Christian. Jesus said, narrow is the way that leads to eternal life, and few are going to find it. But broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many go therein. Okay, so the narrow road is constricted. It's hard. It's tough. I don't Jesus walk here in your house and say, hey, you room. shouldn't be doing this. No, but if I had a Christian concert, you can come out and preach against it. We're That's the right of this country. country. That's the right of this country. You can have you're free woman. speech. I said, look, that your church is a Christian. I said, you're wrong. <laughs> there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no need to um, uh, get all riled up, man. When you get literate, 1 Corinthians 6 9. You take a look at the contemporary versions. It'll say homosexuality because this is the this is the King James Version, sir. Okay, I'll tell you right here. Jude chapter 1, verse 6, right before Revelation. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. He hath reserved into everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. So that means when you leave your natural estate, men, when you leave your natural estate, women, and you go after that which is unnatural, then that means you fall into perdition. Okay? You're going against nature, against God's commands. Like the angels, that the third of the angels that fell from heaven, they left their first estate. They were to worship God. They were to adore God. But they were cast down to the earth because of their disobedience. Because they left their natural estate. Likewise with the homosexual. He leaves his natural estate. And he burns in lust one towards another. And God gives them over to their sin. And I don't want that to happen to you folks. I want you to come out of the darkness folks. And come into the marvelous light of Jesus Christ. He can save you. And then Jesus said, love your neighbor. And then he said it again. Well people don't understand what love your neighbor means. Love your neighbor doesn't just stay at home. Is this, is this your God a libertarian or authoritarian? This sounds like authoritarian. I didn't say I was a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I'm a believer in Jesus, sir. I'm not here for politics. Jesus does not preach that kind. He preaches love. I've been preaching the Bible verbatim since I've been here. Let me tell you. Do you believe that we as Christians, if we accept Jesus, do we have to live holy and do we have to live? Right. You accept, you repent first. You believe the gospel first. Then you repent. Okay, so you believe the gospel. I'm answering his. You first you believe the gospel that he died and rose again, and then you repent of your sins and you get baptized in his name. That's a relationship with Jesus, a beginning relationship. Okay, I have a question. But hold on, I'm, I'm about to get to you. Gonna I'm gonna get to you. But you don't just say you believe in Jesus and still live however you want to live and think that's your, your your golden ticket into heaven, sir. Many people are gonna be deceived because they have that mindset. I, everyone passes go, everyone collects 200. No. Okay. You got to live holy. You got to obey yeah, God's commands. Win, so yeah, go okay, here, here. John 15, 14 says, You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. 
Words in red. Jesus said that. So Jesus said, you're my friend if you do whatsoever I command you. Okay? And Jesus commands us to love our neighbor. Okay? And when we love our neighbor, we don't just stay at home and just allow people to go to hell. We have to get out of our comfort zone and literally love our neighbor and tell them the truth. Even though it's hot and I'm burning. Okay? This is, this is love. When you come out of your comfort zone and you suffer the abuse of the, those who are living contrary to the righteousness of God. Okay? This is love. To warn. Okay? If you had a little child and he was running across the street, you don't want him to get hit by the car. You're going to pull him back. And that's what the preacher does. He comes out to events like this and pulls the sinner away from hell. Even though that little kid thought it was pretty harsh when he pulled on him, he's going to thank you when he sees the semi-truck coming his way. Okay, likewise, you all are going to thank me when you're spared from the wrath of God if you come to repentance. Okay, that's my job as a preacher. To sow the seeds, to plant the seeds, and God's going to give the increase. Uh, do you have like a divinity degree from a, a theology school for this? I went to Bible college, but that doesn't help me out doing this. It isn't, uh, theological degrees uh, are nothing before God. Because Peter was a fisherman. Okay, Matthew was a tax collector. Okay, they were just ordinary men. Jesus said, come and follow me. Okay, so when you follow Jesus, you consider his will above everything in this life. You do the will of the Father. Okay, so you don't need a divinity degree. You don't need a, uh, a theological degree or go to seminary. All God is looking for is a willing vessel who will preach his word without fear or compromise. Any more questions, sir? Any more questions? Let me tell you, Justin Bieber was saved, but he was not preached like that because he was lost. I didn't say Justin Bieber was my brother. I don't know if Justin Bieber saved. He is saved. Okay, that's what he claims he saved. But what about his lifestyle? Is he is he married to is he married to his girlfriend right now? He's married. Okay, that's great. Because if there was a time when Justin Bieber said he was a Christian, but he was living in fornication. Okay, and if, and if Justin Bieber would have died in that sin, he would have went straight to hell. Because God commands marriage. Okay? The Bible says the bed is undefiled in marriage. But fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. So yeah, I'm glad Justin Bieber got married. I'm glad he got married, and he's turned into God, and he's coming. hopefully he's coming back to his Christian roots. But... But it's, it's hard for people in Hollywood because they're immersed in that sort of, uh, a lot of temptations with money, okay? Jesus said, how hard is it for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven? That's true. You can, you can come as you are, but you got to repent eventually. You see, I don't like that. When people give drive-by uh, remarks, that's not good, okay? The, the young lady said, Jesus love accepts everyone. I said, that's true. The Bible says, come as you are. However, after you listen to Jesus' words, you're obligated to repent. That means ask God for forgiveness for your lifestyle of sin. What sin, preacher? Uh, liar, porn watcher, gossiper, thief, adulterer. These are just some of the sins, folks. I used to be caught up in these sins. But when I came to Jesus Christ, I began to read His Word, and He commands us to repent. So with the help of the Holy Spirit, I turn from my wicked ways. I turn to God. Whenever I'm tempted to sin, I turn to Jesus Christ and ask Him for help. And the Bible says, a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. If we fall into sin and make a mistake as Christians, we have redemption through Jesus Christ and we can ask God for forgiveness and He'll clean us up and we continue to walk in righteousness. But we don't live in this lifestyle and come out and support it and call ourselves Christians. That's delusion. Delusions think you're going to change everybody. Well, that's a, that's a, yeah, that makes... You're kind of preaching killed with me people, man. Well, Jesus left the 99 and went for the one lost soul. Okay, I used to listen to preaching like this. Okay, I listened to preaching like this. I listened to a preacher like this. When I was just walking by, I saw a sign. I got convicted. I went home. I contemplated my life and I repented. So you don't know who it's going to reach. We're not here for the masses. We're here for that one lost sheep. 
and God will, God will bring them to his sheepfold. I'm just here to plant and water seeds, okay? I'm just here to plant and water seeds. I'm not here to truly convert anyone. Although if you get converted, praise God, I can pray for you. But just as a farmer, he plants a seed, he doesn't look for a harvest the next day. There's a season that has to come, the water and the rain. But after a while, he'll see a little sprout. And that's what's going to happen in your heart. One day down the line, God's going to begin to water the seed that's sown to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, but at least, at least Jesus said, uh, uh, "Be you perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect." That doesn't mean without making a mistake. That means whole, complete. That means always striving to do right. That means never coming to a stagnant place in your life and accepting sin and just saying, "Oh, woe is me! I'm just going to be a sinner. I'm going to keep masturbating. I'm going to keep watching porn till the day I die." Jesus loves me. No, that's not being an overcomer. You gotta overcome the sins of the flesh. Okay? We're always gonna be tempted with something. My temptation may be different from yours. Or well, I'm still gonna be tempted till the day I die. But the further we are in Christ, things get easier. And we're able to overcome much easier than, it, than when we first came to Christ and we fell into sin. Okay? So that's what, that's what a relationship is about with Jesus. Just like you have a relationship with your spouse. When you first get into the relationship, you don't understand all that offends them. You have to learn through trial and error. And then 10 years into the relationship, <laughs> you're going to make her happy. She's going to make you happy. Because you know each other. You know what she likes and what she dislikes. Likewise with God. When we continue in the Word, we'll become disciples indeed. We'll understand what He loves, what He hates. But if you just stay at grade one, how are you gonna pass, man? How are you gonna how are you gonna get your diploma if you just wanna stay in kindergarten? By just saying, like you said to me ten minutes ago, I confess that Jesus Christ is my personal Lord and Savior, preacher. Great. That's kindergarten. But we gotta go from there. We gotta press on. We gotta keep going. Any more questions, folks, before we wrap this up? Any any more questions before we wrap this up, folks? Okay, God, re the Bible says the angels rejoice over one sinner that repents. There's a specific ordinance that asks that you go to the specific area. No, we've already dealt speech. with the we already dealt with the police about no, this. I don't think you've actually completely dealt with. Well, them. because this is the First Amendment in this country, and we have the right to free I speech. I agree with you okay? 100%. So we're not bothering anyone. So there's a location actually. That this you is have a to be free. This is a free public spot right here. It's not actually, okay? unfortunately, under. So our Jesus Christ said, "I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man or woman comes to the Father but by me." So that means if you're a Muslim, and if you try to go through Muhammad, you're going to go into a dead end. Jesus Christ is very exclusive. He said, I will have no other gods before me. He sits on the shelf alone. Period. But we're living in a time where they say you can worship whoever you want to worship, believe what you ever want to believe in, and you're still going to go to heaven. And I come to tell you that's a lie. Jesus is a jealous God. Jealous. God is a jealous God. Yes, yes. I, I'm not here to give hugs. I'm here to preach the Bible. You can give a hug to her if you need a hug. Okay. Are you guys, are you a Christian? Oh, no. Okay, so, so why do you have a contention with me? Because I'm a Christian. And I'm just trying to share with people that Jesus Christ died and rose from the grave so that you don't have to go to hell. Well, have you ever thought about your eternal life? Where are you going to end up? But, okay, you believe in something, I believe in something, we all believe in something, but well, what does the Bible say? The Bible says it's appointed unto man one time to die and then the judgment. There's no reincarnation there. Do you believe in the Bible? Not especially. But you're not Eastern religion, you're not in the East, you're in America. Okay, this is a Western culture. 
This is a country that was uh, brought up under Judeo-Christian uh, concepts and laws. That's why we have the freedoms that we do in this country because of Christians and the laws of God. Okay? Well, you can get into that debate. But the point of the matter is that we're in this country and we're in the land of the free, home of the brave, and this is the most blessed country in the whole planet. So if I grow up and I marry a woman, am I going to hell? I'm 14 years old. I understand. If you don't turn from that sin, you're going to go to hell. Because why? Because God created you as a woman so that you would multiply the earth and procreate. We're overpopulated. Oh, who said that? There's, bill there's millions of people dying every day and being born every day. It balances itself out balances itself out okay it's all balanced out so don't don't think about if we're overpopulated or not you don't have the mind of God to determine that okay all we are is his creation and we ought to worship the Creator okay so you got to come out of that way ma'am I don't know who taught you that it's okay whether it's family members or friends but it's not the way of God okay God wants to give you beautiful children one day Ten. So I just read you the verse. I heard the verse. That's in the Greek, that's in the Hebrew, that's in the Aramaic. Well, it's the Bible. You got you, you either believe it or not. You, but you don't have to believe it. Yeah, I know I don't. I, I want you to because I don't want you to suffer. Yeah, I get that. But we don't want to hear it. We've heard this. Uh, that's fine. You have a prayer to get to go get to it. I'm here on the street corner. I have a right to preach here. You have a right to Exactly. But you understand why everyone's upset. But I cannot convert everyone. Okay? Everyone. I'm so sorry. I'm not here to convert everyone. I'm here to preach the word. Whoever will receive it. One thing about it, God don't need your help in dealing with somebody else. How do you know? How do you know? Because I know. No, that's you not true. That's not true. That's I not true. I know because I pray. But I, know. But I pray. Oh, I see God. All you got to do is Why do I want to do that? I used to do that. No, 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 no. I used to do that. I used to do that. No, 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 no. Oh, hold, on, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, God did not judge. Okay. God says, call those okay. according to his will and purpose. Okay. Not standing on here trying to make a fool of yourself. You don't yourself. think this is God's will? Wait a minute, hold For on. you to repent? It tells you that in the Bible. We're not here to tell you, All these give you a massage. The corner are from who pray, false who pray, prophets. who pray. Pray. They pray on the corners. Do I'm your preaching. Work. I'm preaching. There's a difference. There's a difference. Okay. I'm not listening to you. Your mouth is. You have too many curse words. Yes. Okay. Not sure I'm going to be in worship tonight. Well, good. I hope you have a blessed time in your worship, and that God speaks to your heart. Okay. And you can accept people who are different than you are. I do accept them. Because you're afraid of them. Why would I be afraid of them? Because why I don't have here? a phobia. Yes, obviously, because you're here. Oh, I'm here because Jesus said, get out of your comfort zone and preach the gospel to all creatures, and they're not exempt, sir. They need the gospel preached to them, too. Okay, they're not like they are also a superhuman creation. They need Jesus, too, just like I needed Jesus, and you need Jesus. Need Jesus didn't say, pass up the pride parades. And preach my gospel to other civilized individuals. No. We all need Christ in whatever state we're in. Blessings, blessings on you, brother. I don't understand what type of church you go to, man, tomorrow because what kind of church would condone this lifestyle, man? Oh, no. You, you come to Jesus Christ as you are, and then you repent. Okay? You come as you are, and then you get cleaned up by Jesus. He'll clean you up. He'll clean you up. Peter, don't let me in the gate. It's none of your worry. It's my word. Well, I never said I hated you. I just wanted you to think about things, these things before it's too late, sir. I said I love you. Well, I'm a man. do you hate me because I tell you the truth? You don't hate me. Why do you hate me? Because I tell you the truth. I just hate people that you hate. When your parents disciplined you, it wasn't because they hated you. Because they want to keep you steer, from, steer clear from danger. All right, so that's why God comes out with the form of rebuke and the preaching to get you guys on the right track. What got you to God? Uh, being in sin and seeing that it was going to lead me to hell. Are you and, then, and, then, and then I read the Bible talked about the love of God. Are you For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Now, hold on. That whoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. Okay, so that's a beautiful thing about God. He loves us enough to give us His Son. But He also commands us to repent. Okay, so you can't take one without the other. No, I'm not here to cast stones. I'm not here to cast stones at anyone. 
No. No. Nope. I'm not here to cast stones. You're telling people they're going to go to hell. But what did Jesus say? And God, Jesus told me that. John 8, 11, he said to the woman who was caught in adultery, he said, go and sin no more. Okay? Go and sin no more. He didn't stone her, but he said, go and stop sinning. That's what I'm telling you, folks. I'm not here to stone you, but go and stop sinning. Stop living in this lifestyle. And start getting in a relationship with Jesus, and he'll clean you up. I don't have pride. Pride goes before destruction. I've already been there. I've done that. I was prideful before, and God brought me low. And it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God.